Hello and welcome back to more Animal Crossing goodness. My name is Hollow and today we're talking about the secrets of Mystery Islands in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Mystery Islands are filled with all kinds of resources, but not just that. Also, you'll be able to collect new and varied bugs or fish for the museum you otherwise can't get normally. Knowing what you've got access to based on the island you just landed on is key to making the most progress and profit from each and every flight. Most of you will know about this useful map from the hero Ninji, but the hero is back again as of a few days ago with new data mined info. He's provided much more detail and more information for each and every island type with interactive maps. I'll be leaving the link to both his Twitter and of course these maps in the comments and also harass Josh to put them in the description. Today we break down all the information about each island type and how you you can make great profit from each and every one. There's a total of 20 different islands possible using your Nook Miles tickets, and they come in different types. Normal, special, and rare. Normal islands have potential for anything. You could farm tarantulas at night. You could farm fish. You could get really, really good rare catches. But the best part of normal islands is that it's very easy to quickly respawn all of these catches so that you can farm them very efficiently by running circles of the island. So that gives you a better chance to farm these rares since you're able to re spawn everything quite quickly. Special islands are the islands you're just as likely to get as normal islands, but the resources and layouts are quite unusual and well special. A good example of a special island that many players should have seen by now is Bamboo Island. All the trees are in fact bamboo, which makes it a little bit more special than a standard island. While rare islands are very different, with terraformed landscapes and a well more video game feel to them. These have much lower chances to be found and all serve some kind of unique purpose. You may have heard of Tarantula Island, which has an insane spawn rate for specifically tarantulas. So let's jump into the information about each and every island and share with you what you need to know about every potential mystery island. Awkwardly in this page by Ninji, these islands are listed 0 to 24 rather than say 1 to 20. He skips over some numbers. It's a little confusing, uh, so I'm going to refer to them as their names rather than their number as much as possible. So to start off, there are four normal island types. Each of these have a 9% chance for you to land on them, and all of them have normal fish and bug spawns. The difference between these islands are the ways the water affects spawns and the terrain. Island Zero, our first island, has a small waterfall and river leading to a river mouth and a pond to spawn for fish, while Island One is basically the same thing but without the pond and a slightly larger cliff. Functionally, you can get flowers here, four rock spawns, and your native fruit. It's not too exciting and perhaps the worst of the islands that you can get, but having said that, the resources are always worth collecting, obviously. For our other two normal islands, we have the Spiral Island and the the fidget spinner island as dubbed by the community. Spiral Island was the first one I found featuring this awkward as hell spiral river and no special resources. Normal bugs and fish, flowers and native fruit and four rock spawns again. I farmed tarantulas the first time I found this island and man it sucked. <laughs> the terrain made it hard to reset spawns and water bugs are common too. While fidget spinner island, the best named island in the game, has just this fidget spinner looking pond and again four rocks and regular spawns. It's not terrible for farming tarantulas compared to spiral island though so there's that now let's just move on to the more interesting islands the special islands mountain island features three levels to the terrain with five rocks at the top level there's no rivers no ponds and has a weird setup to the trees on the ground level you've got normal trees then one level up you'll find only native fruit trees it's a strange island to say the least and you might be upset when you get it because it can only spawn pill bugs and centipedes from the rocks there are no tarantulas to be farmed here generally it's a great resource from the rock spawns and i even got gold here on my run so obviously you're gonna have to go up there with a ladder and check for those spawns with a nine percent chance to land on this island you're gonna see this fairly often next we have the most common island in the game by a whole one percent bamboo island happens to have a ten percent chance spawn rate and replaces all tree spawns with bamboo it's a great source for bamboo crafting obviously it's entirely flat with no rivers or ponds and you can actually get this one any time of the year since it has normal bug and fish spawns you can find this a great island for tarantula farming since it's open open and flatland. Just clear out all the bamboo rocks and flowers and then boom, Tarantula City. It's a solid island to get at night. 
Fruit Island has that same 9% chance as the normal islands, and it's very useful to find, especially early on in your journey. Sister fruits are the only spawns here. With a whopping 19 fruit trees to be found, the fruit here will always be different from your native fruit. However, each time you come back, it's going to be the same fruit. So say your native fruit like me is peaches, and then you come to Fruit Island, you find oranges. Well, every time you come back to Fruit Island, it'll be oranges again. Still, Sister Fruit sells to Timmy and Tommy for 5 500 bells a pop, so it's actually really good money. I would recommend setting up a nice forest of sister fruit back on your main island and then farm that out regularly to sell it since that's very good money. Also, there's four rock spawns and normal bug and fish spawns here, so you could potentially farm tarantulas here if you're inclined, but the cliff and river do make it a bit awkward. So there's your three special islands. Now we're moving on to the good stuff, the rare islands of Animal Crossing. These bad boys all have a 5% or lower chance to be landed on, so don't expect to find these often. And on top of that, many of these have a hard limit of one daily visit, so you can't go there more than once before the day resets. Let's start with one everyone should know about by now, Bell Island. This one has a 5% chance to be found, and it's literally five money rock spawns in the middle of a tiny island. You're gonna need to break the rock at the top side of the island and then vault over to the Bell Rocks. These rocks generally provide just over 16,000 bells per, so if you don't mess up and miss any spawns, you'll be walking away with at least 80,000 bells minimum if you find this one. Naturally, for this island, you will want a vaulting pole, but it does seem, thanks to Ninji's data mining, you actually require the town hall upgrade before it's possible to unlock and find this island. Side note, normal flowers and fish spawn here, but only pill bugs and centipedes can be found from the rocks, so it's kind of a bad one for bugs. For you flower lovers, we've got a rare flower island you can find. With a tiny 2% chance to find this one, it's a big old pond surrounded exclusively by rare flowers. The only bugs that spawn here will be the ones on these flowers, and they can be anything from the common butterfly to the rare sunset moth. I'd strongly recommend if you find this one, farm out the bug spawns until you're satisfied and then dig up every rare flower to bring home with you for your own flower farm. The rarer the flower, the more likely a rare bug spawns on it, which makes for good consistent money if you set up a bunch of these rare flowers together to farm rare bugs. Interestingly, all the trees here are only hardwood trees and there's four rocks to smack too. It's worth doing because you never know if you get gold. Flower Island is capped at one visit per day. Here's a surprise one. Did you know there's actually two Bell Islands? Money Rock Island 2 has four triangular cliffs in each corner and then in the ground level in the middle, it's filled with flowers and the money rocks. the seven of them in fact, so it's even better than the one most people know about. However, it's only a 2% chance to be found rather than the first Bell Island of 5%, so it makes sense that less people know about this. It is listed to have scorpion spawns here, which are good money like tarantulas, so this island is an absolute powerhouse for making bells. I hope I find it one day. Money Rock Island 2 is also capped at one visit per day. We've mentioned tarantulas that much in this video that it's finally time to talk about the true Tarantula Island. The one you've probably heard of is only a 2% chance to be found. You've got a wide circle of land surrounded by a very thin river that you can jump over without a pole. And in this center, only tarantulas can spawn. It is undoubtedly the fastest and easiest place to farm tarantulas considering that. As you'd expect, Tarantula Island is capped at one visit per day as well, and do know that the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemispheres swap, so if you find Tarantula Island right now as a Southern Hemisphere player, then you'll be farming scorpions instead, which doesn't really matter, it's still very good money. Moving on, we have the two Tree Islands. Tree Island 1 is a 2% chance to be found, with no river or ponds, and three cliffs. It spawns exclusively hardwood trees with coconut trees on the beach. This island is not special for the trees exactly, but actually the bug spawns. There are only tree bug spawns on this island, such as the Atlas Moth or Rainbow Stags. While the Tree Island 2 has even less of a chance to spawn at 1%, it's actually a lot easier to farm out. Since it's all flat land with no rivers or ponds, there's no ladder needed unlike Tree Island 1. Both of these are, as you'd expect, capped at one visit per day. Unlike the others, our next island, Big Fish Island, is a 3% chance to be found, featuring a strange shaped pond in the middle with a cliff section. This island only has rare hybrid flowers and the only fish that spawn in the pond 
are large ones. Your chance to use this island to get rare big fish are obviously much greater. So you're going to want a lot of fishing rods for this one since you want to only walk away from this with as many rare fish as possible. For a full list of the spawns, do check our link. Obviously, this is also another island that's capped at one visit per day. But wait, there's actually two Big Fish Islands. Big Fish Island 2 features this moat-like river around a small inner island and has less flower spawns with a slightly worse 2% chance to be found. You will need a vaulting pole for this one though since the river is quite wide. Curly River Island is aptly named and 5% spawn with a well curved river that leads up to a small cliff. It spawns only bugs associated with water spawns here though. That's basically dragonfly types, water beetles and bugs, pond skaters, and the damselflies. It's not bad money to be made when you find these bugs. And there's four rocks to check for gold too. With no daily cap to this island though, you could find it multiple times a day. Okay, this next one's hilarious. It's actually an island dedicated to me. It's so cool that I got this shout out from Nintendo. Thanks guys. Trash Island is a fight percent chance to be found and the only thing you can fish here is trash so you might just see me while you can find only water related bugs here like curly river island this is a great source for trash if you you know want trash furniture and that since there's free cliff areas you will need a ladder and again there is no daily cap on this island either next up is the one percent chance to spawn super rare Finns island it's literally just a rectangle river around a rectangle island it's very strange. The island in the middle features rectangle cliffs that just go up and up and up to the point where the tallest one is too high to climb with a ladder. The purpose of this island has nothing to do with this middle island though. It's all about the finned fish that you catch here, which are basically various sharks and suckerfish. To say the least, this strange island is an absolute jackpot for bells. The sharks are rare as hell normally and worth really good money. This island is capped at one visit per day and you require the town hall unlocked before it's possible to find this one. Falls Island is our next 5% challenge island with lots of cliffs and waterfalls as the name would suggest. There's actually no daily cap on this one and for good reason, it sucks. It's literally just normal resource spawns across the board with four rocks to find. There's just nothing to say about this one other than it lives up to its name. And finally, it's now time for our very last island type, Gold Island. It's a 1% chance to find this one with obviously a once a day visit cap. Extremely rare, you will find hardwood trees, normal flowers, scorpions or tarantulas with a tiny island in the middle of a large pond. You'll have to climb up and over the strange cliff and then back down its other side, vault over to the island to find a single rock that spawns a total of 8 gold nuggets every time. Peculiar to say the least, but hey, I'm not going to turn down 8 guaranteed gold. And then also I can fill up the rest of my bags with scorpions or tarantulas sign me up. Ah, there you go though. All the details on every mystery island possible in current Animal Crossing New Horizons and a huge thank you and shout out to Ninji for once again doing God's work with his data mining efforts. Be sure to drop a like on his Twitter post about this and save that webpage for your own use. Good luck with your mystery island adventures. I've got to go do some more myself just in case I get a rare one anytime soon. But if this video did help you, please hit like so I know to make more videos like this one. If I missed anything, please be sure to tell me about it in the comments. But for now, I've been Holo, you've been you, and I will see you next time.